Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today, we're looking at the top 10 20th century concept cars that we really hoped we'd be driving by now. Number 10. Auto Bianchi Runabout Bertone from 1969 At the Turin Motor Show in 1969, the Auto Bianchi Runabout Bertone made its debut. The car was the closest thing you'd probably ever see to actually owning Speed Racer's Mark V. If the future depicted in the Wachowskis movie was to become a reality, then the runabout Bertone model should be mass-produced by now. The runabout Bertone was not even inspired by the automobile world. The basic concept behind the car was to put a speed motorboat on wheels. Now, just imagine if the wheels were actually retractable and the runabout was either a convertible motorboat or submarine. The dropped ball on the runabout could have given us some James Bond action. Number 9. Ital Design Makimoto from 1986 the Makimoto from 1986 was an attempt at the evolution of the dune buggy. It was essentially a bridge between open-air dirt riding and total recall. Basically, a combination of Volkswagen engineers to try to combine the stability of a car with the open-air enjoyment of riding a motorcycle. The Makimoto was designed to comfortably seat nine. The Makimoto looks more at home riding a rail, a la the black hole, or being a street-worthy roller coaster car. It sports a sleek, boxy open-air look that we were supposed to fall in love with here in the future. Unfortunately, we are as far away from the Makimoto as we are from having everyday silver or gold pants. Number 8. The Chevy Astro 3 from 1969 The Chevy Astro 3 came out during a time in which the moonshot was influencing everything. The question today becomes why aren't we driving around miniature spaceships on freeways right now? It certainly seemed like a possibility in 1969. A little imagination and this baby would have been your driving X-Wing fighter today. One of the truly great innovations of the Astro 3 were the rear-view mirrors. Do you not see them on the car? Well, that's exactly the point. The rear-view mirrors were actually small, closed-circuit televisions in the interior that would broadcast what was going on around the car. If the closed-circuit television idea had come to fruition for everything, all we would lose is one of the objects in mirror jokes in Jurassic Park. Number 7. Ford FX Atmos from 1954 The Ford FX Atmos debuted at the Chicago Auto Show in 1954. This seemingly proto-Batmobile used the term FX for future experimental and seems like it would be more comfortable riding the airways than anywhere near the freeway. The Atmos name was a nod to the idea that cars could one day be run by nuclear reactors. To this day, we do not drive anything that looks quite as futuristic as the Atmos. You can only imagine the crowd's disappointment if they saw a 21st century Kia Optima. A degraded nuclear core was a central plot point in The Dark Knight Rises. Just imagine the wholesale destruction some schmuck could cause by changing out one on its modern-day Atmos. Number 6. Bertone Bat 5 from 1953 Berlinetta Aerodynamica Technica 5 was an attempt to make the lightest, most aerodynamic car possible. The Batoni Bat 5 eliminated weight as well as wind resistance as much as possible. There was even an attempt to eliminate wind resistance in turning wheels. The result? This is a car out of your futuristic wet dreams lighter than most cars on the road now. Also, the Bat 5 could easily top 200 miles per hour. If we had gone down the road of the Bat 5, the muscle car era would have turned into the steroid muscle car era. Literally, the idea behind the Batoni Bat 5 was to have a mini jet cruising down the highway. If that was just going to be regular cars, just imagine what the cop cars to stop them would have to look like. Number 5. GM Firebird 2 from 1956 The Firebird 2 is the only car ever constructed out of titanium. We don't think you're quite taking the journey with us here. Titanium is the same material in which Stewie Griffin talks about making death rays from and Iron Man villains construct their armor from. The Firebird 2 looks like a combination of a shark and a pod racer. The amazing part is that the Firebird 2 was an imagination of the futuristic family roadster. This car would have probably taken the runtime of National Lampoon's vacation down to around 4 minutes. This is probably a bit of hyperbole, but Clark Griswold would have had no trouble keeping up with Christy Brinkley in an updated version of this baby. Number 4. Ford Nucleon from 1958 Believe it or not, there was once a time in which nuclear energy was seen as a source of power for everyday use. The vision was that nuclear energy would provide a clean, cost-efficient alternative to all other types of fuel. Just imagine you could power your car, talk on your phone, and scold the kids with all three of your arms. During this time of unfettered and possibly ignorant optimism, there was the scale model produced of the Ford Nucleon. The Nucleon imagined a future in which cars would run on the same concept as nuclear submarines. There would be nuclear powering stations on every corner. Somewhere, Mr. Burns would put his fingers together and say, Excellent. There was never a working prototype, but the Nucleon gave us a glimpse of what might have been and what still might be. Number 3. Chrysler Turbine Car, 1962-1964 Have you ever sat down and pondered what would happen if they actually put a jet engine into a car? 
Well, take heart, Bucky, you are not alone. Chrysler spent about three decades wondering whether your car could style around like it was straight out of Men in Black. The Chrysler turbine car could run on your choice of diesel fuel, unleaded gasoline, jet fuel, or vegetable oil. The findings on whether or not it would also slice and fry potatoes are a little more vague. Unfortunately, you cannot even buy these things on the black market, as most of them were destroyed by Chrysler or donated to museums. There are only three fully functional Chrysler turbine cars out of 54 produced. The technology was later used in the M1 Abrams battle tank. The possibilities were endless and pretty awesome. Number 2. Ford Gyron, 1961 in the movie Men in Black 3, Will Smith's Jay character said that two wheels is like my minimum. It stands to reason that Jay would have loved or at least tolerated the Ford Gyron. The Gyron was a two-wheeled, fully encapsulated car that looked more like a Tron light cycle than anything currently on the road. At auction, a mere model of the Gyron sold for $40,000. The Gyron operated on a series of gyroscopes to operate the hybrid car motorcycle. For being envisioned over 50 years ago, the Gyron still looks like it could be the future of automobile travel. Number 1. Lincoln Futura, 1955 The Lincoln Futura is still embedded in our collective imagination, not for what the Futura was, but for what the Futura would become. The Futura was originally produced at a cost of a quarter of a million dollars in the 1950s to highlight potential advancement in car design. Ten years later, the Futura was repainted and turned into the infamous Batmobile for the Adam West television series. Years later, the Dark Knight trilogy Batmobile would be postulated to come out of the Wayne Enterprises Research and Development Department. Of course, the Futura was never actually mass-produced, but everyone certainly wanted one. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do hit that like button below this video and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, if you enjoyed this video, why not check out a couple of other related videos that are to the right of me now. Be sure to check those out and thank you for watching.